I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of Alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get matched down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Song number one, Shelter Me Black Little Society. A bit of milk, too. Huh? Let's go.
sun, moon, moon, the stars, I'd give them all away for you. I suggested her name. <laughs> of course you did. Of course. Wait a second. She looks like You're a Soraya. You're my dad? Yeah, she looks like a Soraya. <laughs> Isn't it like Soraya Liana or something like that? Some weird, horrible. Horrible. I mean, it's great. It's great. It's great. It's... All right. <clears throat> you only think it's horrible because you hate me. I could use more volume myself. Can we go right away? What about this kind of volume? Is that helpful? I think this kind of volume is probably what you could use yourself, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> the sunshine in my darkened world was you. The eternal void, infinite and true. Can you hear me call your name? Falling, falling once again. Shelter me, this empty burden that makes me whole. Okay, it kind of sounded like... Okay, what I got from it was it was one person that's you know, suffers from depression or something. They're like the infinite void that keeps kind of pulling them in, but that... The other person was the sunshine in their darkened world. Yeah, that's how I interpret it. The sunshine in my darkened world was you. Not anymore. Why? It said was. That the sunshine in my darkened world was you. That doesn't or maybe they got out of that, that dark spot. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't mean that it's over. Sorry it is could, short it, for Soraya. It could just be it could just be saying like, you know, in my past, when shit was really dark, you were there for me type of thing. It could be a lot of things. It doesn't mm. necessarily have to mean that it's over. Um, the sunshine in my dark world was you, the eternal void. No, I didn't think it was over until when you read it. When you read it and you said, was you. I got you. <laughs> That's when all of a sudden I was like, wait. Oh. Can you hear me call your name? Fall into the see. So he's saying, can you hear me call your name in the present tense? He's, he's saying, you were there for me in the past, but now, right now, can you hear me? See what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> the eternal void, eternal and infinite and true. What do you think that's about? I just thought that that was like him, because the sunshine in my darkened world was you, the eternal void, infinite and true. Can you hear me? Call? I just thought it, I pictured a black hole when this part came on and that it is constantly sucking that person. Like that person constantly feels like, and like, I don't know if you've ever, uh, I actually was, I was looking for some sounds for the other night. 
mm-hmm. you listen to that space stuff and i there's like actually you can listen to like the sound of a black hole for like freaking hours i think <laughs> I put it on for really? like a smidge of a second. Yeah, and I actually felt like if you had some contemplative time while doing it, it actually probably would feel really weird. But anyway, um, that was kind of what I was thinking of when I, I saw like this giant black hole. And I just like to depression, I think, is like that. It's be- because it's it kind of like sucks from you, but it also mesmerizes you simultaneously. So mm-hmm. it to me re- resembles the the black hole metaphor. So when he said the eternal void, infinite and true, and he talked about the darkness that she was the light in, I just felt like his existence. A lot of it has to do with that that black hole. I, that's why I gave it depression. I said it was depression, but but it does. It seems like in the song he's maybe he wants her to be that like the, because she was before, so he wants to, her to do it again. Yeah, I just. When I hear eternal void, infinite and true, I'm automatically going to think death, right? Because it's eternal, it's infinite, and it's true in the Mm -hmm. sense that it's reality. If you take the correspondence view of truth, which is that all truth is that which corresponds to reality. Mm -hmm. So if it's if it's if it's saying to you, there's an eternal void that is infinite and true, it seems like that's talking about death. <clears throat> like the sunshine in my darkened world was you, the eternal void, infinite and true. Can you hear me call your name? Like it's it's almost like a uh, even if I died, do we still have that kind of a connection? Do we have a connection that would be able to where you'd be able to hear me even past the infinite void, even beyond death? Oh wow! Type of thing. Wow. Um, and it and and if. You know, that that's, you know, we look into a lot of things about the supernatural and things like that. Like we're reading a book right now about aliens, I guess you want to call them, whatever. But uh, I have, you know, I have read those stories where the person is communicating with their loved one from, you know, across the grave or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's a really interesting question like how does how does that work and like if i was if i was like controlling that like would i even allow that to happen because like how does the person move on you know what i'm saying that type of thing i don't know how does the person move on how do you know that you're actually that it's the like the person that like there was the connection between the two and not some interdimensional being or something that is mimicking them to get you sucked into some other thing that's impossible like people go oh this this being knows something about me that only you know what i'm saying like that doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means yeah you know what i mean yeah um the sunshine that like dor- dormant for so long you came to me now i feel that i belong can you hear me call your name that's one of the interesting things though about relationships is that you get a guy who's at the top of the world. Hey, man, you're a rock star. I'm like, hey, you're at the top of the world. If you don't have that companionship, like, oh, yeah. it, it just, and it's crazy because he says the sunshine in my darkened world was you, the eternal void, infinite, true. Um, but when you go down here, he says, the sunshine that light dormant for so long, you came to me now. Now I feel like I belong. So. This relationship makes him feel like he yeah, belongs. Right, right. Not being on a stage and being adored by, you know, hundreds, thousands of adoring fans, that doesn't make him feel as if he belongs. But being being with, with this does. woman Aww. in this relationship does. And it's cool because when you know, couples do, especially the ones that are really getting along, like they, they create their own subcultures. They mm-hmm. have their own phraseology they can kind of look at each other on the other side of the room know what each other's thinking that type of thing uh and then when you get to that level i remember with me and you like when we were just friends and stuff like people used to get jealous they get upset They're like how come you know you know you're not like that with me but you're like that with sorry blah 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 it's like well because i don't like you like that you know people mm-hmm. would be all upset like, ah. i'm like well what the fuck man i'm allowed to have friends like what the hell yeah um but yeah, there there is a little subculture that that gets created, um, in in relationships like these kinds of relationships where 
even with our kids, like, we're a pretty tight-knit family, but, like, it's us against them, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> it not, has like, to be. Not that we're against them, but you know what I'm saying, like. Um, it is It is fun, like, like because you can tell some, sometimes that they're, like, they're scheming. And, 100%. like, all of a sudden, like, 100%. we piece it together. And whenever we piece it together, we're like, oh, word. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, it is a fun. We we'll come with a counterattack. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Dear listener. I was like, everybody go to bed. <laughs> I'm trained. You're not going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> there's a lot of situations that I'm like, <laughs> the hell did you think you were going to do with that one, you loser? Uh, okay, I. I mean, there's not, it doesn't really deviate, but I can understand why Stacy would like it because it is kind of. My God, leave him alone. I left the eyebrow because I actually thought it looked sexy. What happened to my eyebrow? <laughs> it was just a little, it's a little, it's a little, oh, but it, you know what it reminded me of? Like when they do the little, and like cut it there because your, your haircut and the, sh it all yeah, looks very said, nice. He said, the, he said the right eyebrow did take a hit. Yeah, but. Like there's a real discussion yeah, about my eyebrow. Because Amy was like, please fix your eyebrow. <laughs> Shout out to Amy. I appreciate you very fucking much. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i definitely i definitely see why this would be especially like for the start of the night because it definitely like makes me feel like it does have an us against the world type vibe but it was also a pretty thankful song like he was being grateful and recognizing like what she you know brought to the table in, in their relationship and you know, there's a lot of you know, the Manosphere stuff and Pearl and all the other things. It's like, it's like men and women are like at war, which of course, like there's always been the quote battle of the sexes, but right now in the, in the social media space, it's, it's really, really freaking toxic right now, as far as like men and women and how they're relating. And yeah, there's a lot of um, blaming going on and there's a lot of, this is what this group is doing right. And this is doing wrong. And, it's cool to be able to be like, well, you know, at the end of the day, actually, no matter how much we evolve, whatever you want to call it, at the end of the day, the building block of society yep. is a dude and pretty girl catches his eye and uh, he wants to win that pretty girl. So Fernando came with as much game as he could possibly muster. Um, and I believe Fernando, you're also a veteran as well. Shout out to Fernando. Uh, cause he, he put in work for the country. Shout out to, I was just talking about how people who are like not born or like descended from this country, but like would be considered foreigners or would be considered not regular American, whatever people think it is, almost have more dedication, mm -hmm. you know, and feel more of a burden for service, whatever, however that manifests itself, and and people who are just born what do you here. What that's coming here. from? Like gratefulness of where things are. Or I mean, yeah, I think for us, a lot of it was gratefulness. I mean, for me, it's like beyond gratefulness. Like, this is my country, dude, and like, I'm gonna ride with this country for better. Or worse. And you know how I am with my people. Like, you know how I am. Yeah. And so. Like, I'll be the first one to say we fucked up here, here, and here. But at the end of the day, like, the building block of everything is pretty girl catches a guy's eye. We go over and pathetically do our best to try to get the girl to like us. The girl then gives us a time of day, which then inspires us to be better men. Inspires us to take that promotion, take that risk, do whatever, because you now have somebody that you're working for. And then as luck would have it, she allows you to reproduce. <laughs> and now you got kids. And now your life before was like all about this woman. And now the both of you, your life is all about this kid. It's a beautiful thing. It's 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 the bread and butter of what makes our society what it is. And it makes it so that everybody doesn't have to live that way. You just need X percent of people in a society to live that way mm -hmm. to provide the foundation for a society, mm -hmm. and then everybody else can live however the hell they want. You can live an alternative lifestyle, but this right here. 
this is what it's about. This is, mm -hmm. this is how we have freedom and all the other shit that we celebrate. And, you know, it needs to be celebrated. All love needs to be celebrated, for sure. But there are certain kinds of love that build nations. Mm -hmm. And these two are like the ultimate uh, example. And as Stacy's saying, friendship first. You know, be friends. Can you guys talk about things? <laughs> Do you guys have a relationship outside of the kids? Uh, cause that's important. Mm -hmm. like, we got a lot of kids, but believe me, there's a lot of shit that goes on. I had nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, love the song. Homie said reproducer, how romantic. Yeah, I, I, I've been told I'm not the most romantic guy on the planet. You guys can, you guys can surmise your boyfriend is obviously not very romantic, but it is what it is. I'm still writing the book. What do you give the song? Uh, 9.8. I like this one. I'm going to give this a solid 9.2. I wanted more uh, lyrics. I agree. It was very I it agree. Was very beautiful, but I wanted more. How else is Shorty affecting you? What else yeah. are you doing in your life? Tell us some more. Thing. You Tell want more. more. <laughs> All right. That was called Shelter Me. That was called Shelter Me by a blend. Bland, a band named Black Label Society. You might have heard of them. We are Vin and Sorry. You might have heard of us. You've definitely heard of Stacey and Fernando because they're the stars Unless of the motherfucking show. You're a loser. Unless you're a loser. In which case, you wouldn't know who they are. L stands for loser. You know what <laughs> L, L stands for? I'm not going to say it. Oh! <laughs> uh -huh.